The real reason the author Dege Akatami decided to let Gojo die. Their fight took place on December 24th, marking Gojo's death anniversary shared with his best friend Geto. Gojo with his six eyes that can tell someone's curse technique by just looking at them Yep, a confirmed feat. Could not see the changes in Maharaga's curse energy and adaptation. He didn't realize Sukuna's plan and was dumbed down in the last chapter. And people are telling me to believe he just stood there to tank the slash because he thought he could because he had ego, right? No, it's not dumb. Gojo did have a huge ego and the wrong idea regarding his existence. That was ultimately his downfall as he hadn't reached true enlightenment like Sukuna. Gojo was never the honored one and that's why Gege has left a chance for his rebirth just like Buddha. As Nanami stated, Gojo was fighting for his selfish desire to find satisfaction where he forgot his true purpose, being a sensei and using his power to protect the next generation. His dream to let them live out their best years of their life. At the end of the day, upon Gojo's death, he comes to terms with the errors of his way and the shortcomings of his ideal self. Since Gojo's expectations weren't met by the fight with Sukuna, he felt bad for both sides and felt no satisfaction like he presumed he would. In actuality, all Gojo wanted was for his best friend to be by his side forever. During the airport scene, he told Geto everything, opening up about his feelings. He just wanted to be with his loved ones and feel normal again. Now you're probably wondering, ABD, ABD, I I don't get why the story keeps focusing on loneliness and what does it have to do with love? Well, I have the answer. The idea of loneliness is highlighted with Sukuna starting in chapter 219. Yoruzu an ancient sorcerer fell in love with Sukuna, projecting the same idea of loneliness onto him just like Gojo did. She was a master and could do as she pleased with her selfish nature. Due to this, she never had the opportunity to ever develop any meaningful relationships, as everyone would fear or label her. That hick committed acts of savagery, yet received an appointment here in the capital. That explains it all. However, after seeing Sukuna and being able to tell how strong he was. She realized his beauty much like a flower that Gojo stated in chapter 236. She believed she could understand Sukuna as they share the same problem. This causes Yorizu to have a new goal where much like Gojo, she wanted to remedy Sukuna's loneliness with the idea of love. To achieve this, Sukuna needs to exert every inch of his power and feel satisfied. Remember, in the afterlife, Haibara and Nanami mentioned that Gojo lives for Jujutsu and is perverted with his use of sorcery as it stems from his selfish need to bust nuts with his opponent. Everyone's comment of how Gojo lives for Jujutsu and does not wield it to protect others brings the story full circle from his fight against Toji where Gojo claimed he was no longer fighting for Rika or the protection of others, rather himself and the requirement to become the strongest. This ecstasy allowed him to evolve and become the honored one, referring to Buddha himself using his quote about heaven and earth. Therefore, both Gojo and Sukuna's selfish nature with Jujutsu made them beings that evolved to godhood. Hence, Gojo even accepts Kenjaku's terms to wait till December 24th, rather than just killing Sukuna at 15 fingers with an incomplete body. Thus, Kenjaku said Gojo is best when he is alone and all his friends claim he should just complete all missions on his own. He purposely took a gamble and a harder decision because he wanted to satisfy himself, letting Sukuna get to his full power. This leads to your next question. Why did Gojo think about Sukuna's feelings and be disappointed instead of focusing on saving the world and his friends? Well, Gojo wanted to fight Sukuna with his entire experience. It's like two lovers trying to please each other but only one leaves satisfied. They cannot receive love by conventional means due to their position, right? Even Shoko highlighted that she could never have fallen in love with Gojo even if hell froze over. So in parallel, with Yoruzu's revival in the Culling Games, she tries to show Sukuna that there are people as strong as him, that his solitude belongs to herself and that they can get married. 
However, since Sukuna is above everyone and understands true jujutsu, his domain expansion introduced so early in the story establishes his divinity as if he's painting an impossible masterpiece, a work of art, not on a canvas, but on thin air. That's why in chapter 225, Kashimo refers to Sukuna like a god. And later in chapter 238, he uses his x-ray vision to see Sukuna's original body as perfection. Kashimo is mesmerized to the point of calling the king of curses, the man that spreads the ultimate misery in the world, the definition of beauty, beautiful. This is because he has evolved just to be the perfect killing machine. He can make hand seals whilst two of his other hands are free to fight or defend, or even use his cursed tools. But it doesn't even stop there. Sukuna has multiple mouths to help him chant his incantation without any breaks. This evolution allowed him to destroy everyone in the Heian era, every single elite sorcerer family, even facing 20 of them at once only for them to lose. In fact, the gap between Sukuna and everyone else is so wide that the story, every theme, every cornerstone of each character is just catching up to him and his strength. As a result, Yorizu can't be compared to him to satisfy his needs, as Sukuna instantly deduces her technique as the perfect sphere, claiming it's boring, as cursed techniques like hers, which are energy based, always end up the same. Therefore, he's already adapted to it and has so much experience in jujutsu that no one can quench his first. This isn't even the first time Sukuna has stated this, as Nanako and Mimiko's mobile technique is also instantly deciphered by him and he proceeds to call it boring. Similarly, Gojo couldn't even have hobbies because whatever he did would be mastered rapidly and lead to boredom once again. As a result of this superiority over everyone else in existence, Sukuna is assumed to feel isolated at the top of the mountain. But the truth is, his solitude led him to relentless aggression like a calamity. This links to Itadori's question on why Sukuna spread so much misery. In response, he tells Itadori that flies and insects should just die in misery rather than clinging on to life. Why do they continue to be weak as life itself is suffering and pain? Much like the Buddhist philosophy of the cycle of samsara. In Buddhism, desire and ignorance lie at the root of suffering. And this misery is what fuels cursed energy and Sukuna's dominance over the world. That is why Gege used Yorizu's character to literally personify this metaphor as her technique made her an insect. Sukuna distinguishes a clear line where morality becomes fragile and meaningless to those on top. These people shed all likeness to others. Though on the surface, Gojo might seem different, in reality, he isn't. Even as a teenager, Gojo calls cursed users who try to kill him small fry, just like Sukuna would. In the end, Sukuna and Gojo are meant to portray two sides of the same coin. However, Sukuna is the embodiment of what one could call individualism an extreme selfishness, which favors the freedom of action and growth of the individual over that of the group. For example, in chapter 199, Angel abides by God's law and stated her sole purpose is to destroy Sukuna. But even she chose to be symbiotic with Hana Kurasu rather than taking over her body and soul, even though it would have been beneficial to her and would have avoided the mistake Hana ultimately made against Sukuna in chapter 212. Sukuna would call Angel an idiot for making such a mistake by holding on to such ideals. Therefore, in contrast to everyone else, Sukuna is the personification of selfishness that comes at the cost of everyone around him. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, why not watch this video on your screen right now regarding Boruto's new powers in the timescape?